States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right. Thank you for coming to now tonight. Uh, we have around the table, as I usually uh, like to introduce, we have a little, little uh, fewer people, but we'll try to work on rectifying some of that tonight. Uh, so hopefully some people watching at home, but if, for those of you in the audience or watching at home, we have Christine Keller, our town clerk, John Pachotti, a town councilor, Michelle Floelling, our town manager, Peter Lawrence, councilor, and myself, Matt Townsend, councilor and chair. So our first order of business will be the public announcements. Uh, details may be found at www.fairfieldme.com. Uh, number one, Fairfield is still hiring in all departments. Contact the town office. Number two, for the 6-11-24 state primary and MSAD 49 election, the absentee ballots are available May 13th to June 6th, so it's coming right up. Online application requests are preferred capturing efficiencies, also available in person and via phone. Accessible absentee ballots are available online. Absentee ballot returns via the secure drop box for USPS plan on five business days lead time. Polls are open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on June 11th at the Fairfield Community Center, 61 Water Street. The town office will be closed 611-24 for personnel to staff election polls. Number three, the Fairfield Benton Fire Rescue June 8th open house, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. tours, noon extrication demo, fire detector drawings, and more. So I'm going to assume that location is going to be at the fire station. The fire station doesn't oh. say, but I wanted to make sure, make sure that yes. I'm make, making an assumption, no, but I wanted to put good. it out there. Uh, so number four, the uh, Lawrence Public Library, comprehensive program details online and via the LPL social media. Summer reading program, all ages, June 17th sign up includes completing challenges for prizes and participation in special activities and events. New, uh, the patron's summer pass to the coastal Maine Botanical Gardens. Call LPL for details. That's a nice, nice uh, advantage or a nice uh, bonus for the summer. Uh, children 18 and under, meal collaboration with MSAD 49 lunch, 11.30 to 12 on Monday through Friday, June 17th to August 16th. Non-emergency services will be closed 619 in observance for the Juneteenth holiday. Uh, and action, so moving to our action item number 24-88. Uh, or the town council hereby considers applicants for an appointment to fill a town council seat and general assistance fair uh, hearing authority member vacancy for a term set to expire on the date and time of the town council's next annual organizational meeting in January 2025. So moved. Second. Motion to second. So discussion. Do I hear uh, any? Like, do I hear a nomination? We have three. I actually have two candidates. Yeah, I just want to say um, um, there's the third candidate. He was ruling. Um, I want to thank that um, candidate um, for our interest. Um, he was a charger and a hard worker. So I just want to thank him. So and who is that? That was Matt Tully. There you go. Uh, so uh, so thank you, Matt, for at least uh, putting your name in. And I'm sorry that you cannot uh, continue on but I appreciate you letting us know. So we have two uh, at this point that are still remaining. We have Dan Kissinger and we have Adam Lorette. So thoughts along those lines. I guess the usually first is to uh, have a nomination and a second and then we have a discussion on either one of those and then and a vote and even either one or both. So uh, First before we um, do that, I'd like to have um, the candidates um, go up to the podium and um, talk about themselves a little bit and say why they were interested in the, the council position because I know it was only one here tonight so I just want to have him still stand up and um, discuss why he wants to be a counselor. So that'd be fine if you like. Uh, Adam, you are in, in, in the room so. <clears throat> yes, uh, Adam Lorette, Davis Road. Um, yeah, I, I put my application in, I think it was that night I emailed uh, Christine. I, I have a sense of pride with our community. Uh, I, love, I love Fairfield. I've been here only seven years, um, but in those seven years, uh, it's really been 
a big home to me. Um, I feel like there is the opportunity here to um, really work with the community um, in a way that might evolve uh, from the way it currently is. Uh, I think online, social media, there's an opportunity to engage with our residents. Um, and I feel like I have a great responsibility there. Um, I work in human resources. Um, I have for a few years now. Uh, I've worked locally <clears throat> at US Cellular as a leader. Uh, a lot of the skills that I see all of you display, I see in myself. I look to all of you in different ways as a mentor uh, for some of the things that I've yet to learn. <clears throat> um, and I think it would be an honor to serve Fairfield in this way. Um, and that's that's why I applied. Do we have any questions for Adam? Uh, strengths, I guess I would ask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I certainly believe that through my responsibilities at, at my current employment, uh, working in human resources, communication is, is key. Uh, my emotional intelligence is something that I've, I've touted for a while. Um, I believe in, in the position of public service as a counselor, that's really important. Um, and I, I bring that to the table. Um, as well as just community involvement uh, between uh, volunteering at the Grange, uh, the food pantry. Um, I serve as the treasurer on the board uh, for the Benton Elementary PTO, um, something I take a lot of pride in. Uh, my wife is a teacher and an educator, so I, I get that the extra help there is, is very valuable. Um, and yeah. I think actually taking those strengths and maybe you see some weaknesses in the council and where those might be and where, how you might fill some, fill some holes. I'm not sure if you've had that thought. Yeah, I think. And, um, and you feel free to be honest about you know, the weaknesses of the council. I'm sure. Yeah, I think you know, this last year uh, when I started going pretty much to every meeting, um, it was, there's been some difficulties, right? And communicating with uh, the community in different ways. Uh, when I take a look at the goals of the uh, council, uh, I see some aspirations to jump into the social media aspect of how do we meet our residents where they're at. Uh, working for a telecommunications company, that's one of my strong suits. Um, I believe that social media is the way we can reach all of our residents. Uh, and I look to take that opportunity um, and bring new, fresh perspectives and ideas on how we can um, you know, you use social media to our advantage, not as a place where people go and complain about something and it just festers there. Um, but it's, an, it's, a, it's a way to, to take ideas back to the council meetings um, and have, have a voice. Thanks. Uh, I had another question. Um, when did you hear there was going to be a vacancy? Because I've been reviewing your packet mm -hmm. and I see a time damp state mm -hmm. concern myself. Okay. Um, let's see. I received a phone call from Dwayne himself. That would have been, oh, I believe the morning of his announcement to you folks. I'm not quite sure on the time frame, uh, but you'll see in there that Dwayne's. Yeah, I see uh, his email, uh, in there. 425 that afternoon. And as a council, we vote, we adjourn, uh, Came together at six thirty and voted before seven o'clock, and I know April twenty fifth or May, May twenty second. May twenty second. May twenty. Okay, sorry, you said April. So, yeah. But so it's, it's before twenty five p.m. is what he's saying. It's before um, um, Council um, Bickford was voted by the council to receive receive his uh, resignation. So this is just time damp, time and damp, date and time stamp issue. Mm -hmm. So. so. So you knew this before he resigned. I believe Michelle can speak to that. So, just for clarification's sake, uh, Councillor Bickford had turned in his resignation prior to that date and time. The council just hadn't voted on it officially at the council meeting, but we were aware of it before. Okay, that. yeah, All right. that's correct. Yeah, and 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 I think you'll find if you look back at his email when he resigned, it's dated well timed well before. Yeah, I saw that too. 
before before the, the 22nd. So you saw that his resignation was dated before right. Adams' right. notice. And the council didn't vote until that night. Right. But he's still a councilor then. He was, but right, correct. he had. But I just right. feel like it was. Um, I mean, technically, he wasn't a councilor once his resignation had right. hit, but. Right. I just felt like it was a, a, a special appointment saying, OK, I want you to place me. Before. The request actually had come to me. Uh, Councilor Bickford at the time had wanted that statement read aloud. Um, but I did explain the fact that that actually wasn't proper form for an outgoing councilor mm -hmm. to publicly endorse at a council meeting prior to. So he held on to that and gave it to him afterwards. So. OK. Adam, anything else, sir? So I, I don't have anything else. Very good. Do you have anything else? No, just uh, it, uh, just to make sure that you'll be able to attend all the meetings. Yes, certainly. Okay. That, barring any crazy, crazy things, I do plan on being yeah. here in person. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the other part. So the other uh, person who applied was uh, Daniel Kissinger. Yep. Yeah. I, I did receive notice there's a possibility he would be paying if the weather yep. held. So. Right, I'm sure, yeah. That's probably, uh, so I guess we can, if you want me to, I can read his quick letter, if that at least so people understand, uh, know him. Um, so uh, Fairfield Town Council Committee members, I am requesting that you consider myself for the newly vacated seat on the Town Council for the remainder of the term. I'm seeking an appointment to this position with a zero agenda mindset. It is my sole desire to serve our community by listening to the concerns of citizens and engaging in edifying and pr productive uh, conversation for the ultimate purpose of improving our town and building a stronger, healthier community. I have been a resident for, in, of Fairfield for 12 years and I'm currently building a business in and for our community. I work closely with our code enforcement officer on a few projects and have had multiple interactions with many of our town employees. I'm currently serving on the ad hoc committee for 31 Lawrence Avenue home. I have previously served on the board of directors for the Greater Waterville Habitat for Humanity. Uh, thank you in advance for your time and consideration, Dan Kissinger. So uh, with going through those letters and discussions, uh, do I hear any nominations? So I would nominate uh, Adam Lorette uh, for town council. And do I hear a second? I'll second. Are there any other nominations? I would um, nominate um, Dan um, Kissinger for the position. Uh, second. So we can, uh, so if they're not hearing a second. Dies for lack of a second. Yep. So at this point, uh, so that dies for the, out the nomination without second. So all those in favor of okay. our uh, nomination for Adam Lorette? Three zero. Very good. No, I think why not, um, so Adam. Thank you very much. We welcome. I do want to actually thank Daniel Kissinger. Uh, I think he's a tremendous asset to this town, and I hope to see him involved in more um, things going forward. And I think because he is, he brings a, a good viewpoint and uh, a lot of energy to it. And I enjoy working with him on the ad hoc committee. So uh, hopefully he will continue to be involved. So thank you, Dan. And uh, just Adam. So now we're actually going to. Uh, uh, seat uh, Adam tonight, so we're actually. Um, I'll turn it over to our the, the town clerk. Yeah. Let me have your show.
We're going to sign everything at the end of the meeting of recess. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to take a seat, I've prepared a packet for you. I also want to state to the other applicants, there's an opportunity to down the road for a council seats and any other committees. So just don't, just don't get discouraged. There's always opportunities out there. Yes. Yeah, we have elections coming up. And yep. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. So we'll move on to the uh, second order of business. Start of the public hearings, I have none. So, and then uh, moving on to our third order of business, public comments, limited to three minutes. Members of the public may speak to the council or request an opportunity to speak on a specific, specific item that is on the agenda, or may email <coughs> comments for council to info at fairfield-me.gov by 4 p.m. day of meeting. Submitted content may be read aloud at this time. Any, nothing, any. any comments in the, in the audience? Hearing none. Uh, the fourth order of business, reports from staff and committees, the town manager report. All right, so on May 23rd, uh, Councillor Thibodeau, wearing her chairman of the economic community development hat, um, as well as Jeff Tyner and Tim Forsman, who are economic community development members, and I planted flowers in the containers between Sunnies and Beatty's, um, and then cleaned up the beds at Memorial Park. We didn't plant flowers this year there because we're gonna be doing some work to those flower beds over the course of the next month or so, so they'll look for some, some enhancements to happen up there in, in that region. Um, and then also on the 23rd, I attended the uh, KRDA executive board meeting. May 29th, um, I did meet with the Teamsters Union to finish up the language for the fire department union contract, which we'll be talking about at the end of this meeting. Um, and then the 30th, uh, students and staff from Lawrence High School did work with economic community development committee members and the public works director to clean up Cattail Trail. So if you haven't been out there, that's looking really good. Um, and also we've kicked off for the month of June our Love uh, Main Trails program um, so that either at the Cattail Trail, Mill Island Trail, the trail behind KVCC at their Western Ave campus, as well as the trail that starts at Goodwill Hinkley behind the museum. There are QR codes there for you to scan and register. If you visit all four of those trails within the month of June, you'll go into a drawing to win a $100 gift certificate. So get out there and, and take a look at those trails. Some folks have been, I believe uh, the students from Lawrence High School also went to Goodwill Hinkley um, and did some work up at that trail as well. So a lot of good things going on with for walking activities. Um, and then June 4th, which was yesterday, attended the Economic Community Development Committee meeting, which Councillor Lawrence can fill you in on. Um, and then just for some general updates, I have been able to secure a realtor uh, for 31 Lawrence Ave. Uh, the last council meeting I had reported that I couldn't find one, I did, did manage to get that. Um, that hopefully will get done within the next week. And then also Friday is Sue Jacobs' very last day uh, here for the town of Fairfield. She's worked here for more than 36 years. Mm -hmm. um, we would encourage anybody to stop by the town office um, anytime between nine and noon on Friday to wish her well on her retirement um, and, and to give her a, a good little send off. We've been trying to make her weepy all week and regret leaving us, but uh, it, it's, it's gonna be a good, it's good. A good. And that's it for me. Any questions for, for Michelle? No. Thank you very much, no. Michelle. Uh, so committee reports. Uh, we would have economic development, if you want to give that. Uh, I'll give a little brief. I, I was vice chair, I took over Stephanie Thibodeau, who's chair. Uh, we met yesterday at 3.30 right in chambers. Um, we discussed about the um, train chassels, which um, there's going to be tabled because we used to on the, um, do some murals on the train chassels, but there's no more discussion later on that. Then um, the signage, um, trying to brand our, brand our um, Fairfield on our signage. I know we got signage out there saying where the locations are, but we're just looking at uh, possibly some new ones. Um, one. Um, um, Member thought, well, we got some recreational um, parts like Mill Island and things like that, put them in green saying it's for recreational. So that's just a discussion. Then then the discussion came up, because I know I had a few people asking me, where is the community center? Then uh, town manager got into, so yeah, she's trying to tell people where the um, 
community center is. So there's people out there do not know where the community center is. There's no signage. So we're trying to brand um, Fairfield saying what buildings are out there that we have. So then um, we had a discussion with Gavin and Stephanie from the um, Growth Council about um, the downtown TIF with the issue. issue. Um, we have a current TIF, the downtown, and we was talking about possibly expanding it to a, um, a longer area, but we get to get the map. We have the current maps, but we want to check out maybe right. expand well, it. Yeah, because we had initially just left it right into the just downtown. A, just a small. The, we want the train it. station to the thing Correct, where, yeah. where, where we might, businesses were actually at. Yeah, yeah. we just trying to try think, should we expand it out more? So that's going to be a, yep. another discussion. Yep. Um, then governance, we're going to talk about the Mill Island project. Still updating on that. Um, there's more information come out for our next meeting. Then trail days, um, the town council mentioned about that June 1st, it was trail days, yeah. uh, QR codes and things like that. And we are not meeting in July. We're taking a month off from a meeting. And our next uh, meeting is August 6th at 3.30 right in council chambers. And we like to have the, some public actually show up to the meetings. Yesterday we were um, just, uh, we, we had a few um, people there, no, no residents, just a right. committee, so, and that's it. So uh, one thought along that line, I think it's because they've always had the economic development because a lot of times they were business owners right. and it was uh, decided to be earlier in the day. That's one of the things to look at. I think you would have mm -hmm. more involvement if you had, you know, a, an evening session. And also but, too, we that, or even if you alternated right. some uh, evening and afternoon sessions, but yeah. that's just this thought. And also too, we we're trying to update too the uh, area, the businesses that are still in business mm -hmm. in Fairfield. Some have left right. or moved and things like that. We're trying to update yep. the database. So, anything else, Michelle? On this stuff? No, I th I think you you summed it up. Um, so yeah, again, we've been looking at some municipalities have signed ordinances, so they give very specific parameters as to what municipal based signs look like so that's something that the committee has been looking at um, so to have a common theme so color font design that sort of piece so they're they're still working on that so that hopefully will will come to the council eventually and then um, we discussed uh, there's some pieces in the facade and marketing program actually that needed to be updated um, that will come to the council for your meeting the last meeting in June so to update that plan um, and basically all that is is that we have some folks that have been awarded some grants that have not spent them um, and they were multiple years ago in the way the program currently works is those funds are sitting there as being allocated um, and we need to put a time frame in the program such that if they are not used within a certain amount of time they go back out and get to be eligible for use again um, so that was one of the pieces that they discussed um, and then the downtown plan that has been a piece that we've been looking at doing, so how do we enhance and grow our downtown? Um, but a downtown plan as an official document is something that is, does happen in partnership with a downtown TIF. So the process that we're using to update our existing plan will help it so that we are in compliance with um, economic community development's laws regarding downtown TIFs. So should that TIF, it expires in 2039, um, but if we wanted to extend it um, or renew it, we, we would be in compliance with that process. So those are so a lot of the things that we were working on. Yep. And that's going to come with a lot of public input sessions um, going forward. We're at the very preliminary parts of that, but what we're gonna be really looking for is public input regarding visions for the downtown. Um, and it'll be late fall. We're gonna try to wait till after the kids go back to school, make sure summer's over, but before the holidays start. So we'll be working on trying to get those scheduled. So. Thank you. Uh, the other committees, we have the ad hoc committee on the uh, 31, 31 Lawrence Avenue house uh, that is being uh, <clears throat> is waiting for actually the um, market, fair market value with our uh, realtor. So that's actually moving with it. We'll have a, a meeting after that. We may need to extend that committee's uh, time frame uh, if, if needed. So that's where that one stands. The other one would be the PFAS committee, which we had to move our meeting back uh, about two weeks from yesterday. Uh, on that end so we'll have that meeting in two weeks uh, we also have been able to secure uh, the CDC uh, meeting with us but it won't be until August but hopefully right. uh, we'll have some meetings in between and we can kind of set up our plan 
and uh, looking at uh, some of the uh, final kind of bring it to a to a close on some recommendations to the council so we'll probably bring those in september would be my guess I'll have that I, does that sound good to you john yeah. uh, does that yes. sound reasonable yeah yeah that's that's the only decent choice that we have actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good so the fifth order of business is the consent agenda. These items are considered routine and standard business and therefore will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests prior to consideration of this portion of the agenda, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered next on the agenda. Yeah. Item 24-89, or the, town, uh, the, the Fairfield Town Council hereby waives the reading of and accepts the minutes for meeting number 2024-10 held on May 22nd, 2024. And item 24-90, order that the Town Council hereby approves Treasurer's Warrant number 124 general fund in the amount of $524,532.56, not limited to, but including MSCD 49, Gregory's Disposal, Motor Vehicles, and Tritech Software. So, so second. And, uh, I've been advised that um, our new member should abstain on this vote uh, just because he was not a member of the previous one, too, so I can't approve the, <laughs> the minutes. But so I'm sorry. No, nope, that was the plan. But but we're getting to the sixth order of business close, and you can, we can get yes. uh, you know some more, more feedback. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so uh, motion a second. All those in favor? Thanks. Zero one. Stay. Mm -hmm. So the sixth order of business to take action on the following items of, uh, of business as read by the council chair. Uh, item 24-91, or the town council hereby signs the treasurer's certificate of sewer settlements for sewer bills with a balance due of $82,575.35. So moved. Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? Have any questions? So this is similar to what you did with the property taxes right. last meeting. But the only difference is, is that your next motion is going to be to recommit them as opposed to the assessor recommitted the taxes last week. So, same thing. All those in favor? Item 24-92, order the town council hereby confirms certificate of sewer recommitment to treasurer Danielle McCormick for the billing quarters uh, 236 in the amount of $8,932.32, uh, 237 in the amount of $10,500.94, 238 in the amount of $13,838.87, 243 in the amount of 17,807 and 88 cents and 244 in the amount of 31,495 dollars and 34 cents for a sum total of 82,575 dollars and 35 cents. So moved. Motion second. Second. Uh, any discussion? I think this is what uh, Michelle just talked about. Yep. So. And so it's the same exact amount. It's the same everything. same thing as the so last. Every, everything that you know, yep. Sue is no longer obligated to collect now. Danielle, Danielle. Yes. right? Yep. All those in favor? Thank you. Four zero. Item twenty four dash ninety three. Or the town council hereby acknowledges and expresses appreciation for Planning Board member Perry Waltz's service to the Planning Board from January second, two thousand fifteen, to May 9th. 2024 and declares a vacancy for a term set to expire at the date and time of the town council organizational meeting in 2027. So moved. Second. Uh, motion to second. Discussion. All right. Definitely uh, acknowledging that appreciation. So that's an important part. But, uh, all those in favor? Item 24-94 or the town council hereby considers appointment uh, transition to, uh, for the planning board, Monica Town, from alternate to regular member for the remainder of the term set to expire at the date and time of the town council organizational meeting in 2027. So moved. Second. Motion second. Discussion. All those so, in favor? Oh, I just one. So this just makes the last alternate now a permanent member. There's no more alternate, so. Nope, there's one more oh. alternate left. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, but, yeah, the next action item yeah. will declare the, the second alternate vacancy. Oh, okay. So they, they have their tiered yeah, way of going lines. That's up good. through. It's just asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can sign up to fill that vacant step, position. Step by step. Yeah. 
Um, I, 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 it was rumored that it was literally a flip of the coin last Monday at the planning board meeting as to which one of the alternates went into the permanent slot because um, they both were interested in continuing to serve. So I believe the planning board flipped a coin <laughs> for their recommendation. So it was good. They applied <laughs> the same day. <laughs> so all those in favor, uh, Monica Town? Thank you. Four zero. And then item 24-95. Or the town council hereby declares a vacancy on the planning board for an alternate member of the for the remainder of the term uh, set to expire on the date uh, and time of the town council organizational meeting in 2029. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor of declaring a vacancy. All right, so we have that vacancy. Now we'll put out the applications for that as well. Thank you very much. So moving on to the seventh order of business, the council workshop and other business. Uh, discuss proposed updates to the land use ordinance section 9.14-B, affordable housing development. Michelle, can you I can. help us out on this? I can definitely help you out on this. So you did get a quick little memo yeah. uh, that went from the code enforcement officer to the planning board members. Yeah. Um, if when we went through the process of revamping the land use ordinance to incorporate LD 2003, which was the addition of accessory dwelling units within our ordinance, um, there were some. We received funding through the state of Maine, uh, ten thousand dollars to assist us with that process. It helped pay for the contract, the separate additional contract through KB Cog, as well as any potential legal review, printing, all of those different things that we needed to do. Well, part of all of that requires us, the way that process worked is the state of Maine paid us up front, and then we had to report to them what we spent it on, and they had to review what it is that we had done for work. So we were closing everything out. Uh, we reported to them, sent them a copy of our land use ordinance that was approved by town council in December, and they discovered the fact that we had missed a portion of the law requirement, um, which is for us to use um, language on multifamily density bonuses. Um, the language has now to be included. Um, some clerical corrections, such as we did find some spelling errors afterwards, time of day, blah, blah, blah. So what they're looking at doing is they have to incorporate the multifamily density bonus wording within the land use ordinance. Um, so what this will do is the planning board's reviewed what the state has said, the correction has been made, um, and now what will have to happen is you will have to have the two public hearings and then do an ordinance amendment for those pieces. Uh, but other than that, everything else was good. Um, they, they were happy with the work we had done. It was just a minor oversight. So it was one of those pieces where they did discuss it during their work sessions, I was told, um, but they didn't feel like it was necessary to include it, not realizing that it wasn't an option. Um, that's been some of the confusion surrounding some of this LD 2003 language requirements. So, so. It, will this affect anyone grandfathered or, inf or have dwellings now not up to state standards? Do they need to do updates or are they grandfathered? No, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has more to do with the number of dwellings that you're allowed to have on your property. Okay. So like where we used to have, you know, in order for one residence to be located, you had to have a certain amount of, you know, frontage or a certain lot size. And now basically that's that's taken a lot of that and, and removed all of those requirements. So. Yeah, just a point of clarification. It's, we have to have one public hearing, but two public notices that are staggered is part of the oh, okay. requirement in the ordinance. ordinance. And because of the lead time that we need, we were we were looking at the July first, the first July meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, when I'm just reading it, so everybody un understands, uh, it is uh, now going to be changed to multifamily dwelling units are allowed to have a dwelling unit density of two and a half times the base density that is otherwise allowed in that location, and require two off-street parking places spaces for every three units. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's everything else was yeah. housekeeping. Everything yeah. else was good. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and there'll be a full markup version that'll be available once yep. this was all done. So um, we've known about this for a bit. The planning board and I didn't meet last month, so we wanted to make sure that they were fully aware of these changes before we brought it to council. So, mm -hmm. um, and they were after their meeting on Monday. 
We also have a, just along that line, I'm not sure if it's, I should uh, discuss it now, but we have the, uh, the memo from uh, Nicole, uh, the code enforcement, uh, regarding the rate of growth ordinance. Oh, yes, that was given to you for informational purposes. Sorry, I meant yep. to mention that during my manager's report. That question was asked um, at the last council right. meeting, um, and this was for follow-up. So it was in their minutes where they had discussed the memo that the council had sent during rate of growth, and that they did not feel that it was an ordinance that was necessary for the town of Fairfield at this time, um, but certainly you know, opened it up so that if the council wanted to go into one of their meetings and have further discussion with them, they were open to that as well. But after reviewing the information, didn't feel that putting a rate of growth ordinance in place was something we needed to do. We are not at the point where we are, you know, inundated with developers who are looking to to come into the community. So very good. Yeah, yep. I said we had yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so uh, uh, to this point, usually we get a chance to discuss other council business. Any thoughts along that line, John? I'll, I'll go to you. Well, no, first thing I'd like to do is welcome Board Adam and definitely. Yeah, welcome Thank to you. the uh, <clears throat> welcome to the council. Council. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Awesome. <laughs> uh, John is a great mentor, so uh, definitely uh, take advantage of his knowledge. I have tried to and failed many times, but uh, I will still continue to look, look uh, to advice. <laughs> so, uh, do you have anything else, John, at this point? Anything no, not at this point. Stirring uh, you? Okay. Not at this point. Great. <laughs> We're good. Um, Peter, I'll let you go next. But I just want to echo that for what John said. Welcome to the, um, the council. Thank you. you um, I know you was on the budget committee and things like that. You know all the budget already. And um, I hope we can mentor you and uh, help you a lot. Uh, I got a few things myself here. I get, I get my notes. Uh, this is back from February 28th. Um, I know council, the council meeting um, discussed about the uh, 2014th comp plan, as Stephanie mentioned, for a proposal to create a uh, park and rec de uh, department. And the consensus is to research after the town meeting and report back to June. So I'm just wondering, has that been uh, tabled to um, in a June or um, another meeting? The plan is to report back to you at the end of June. Okay. And uh, another question I have a lot of um, residents ask, about the um, back in um, February 14th and 28th, about uh, $20,000 we received from the um, Somerset County uh, Flood um, Relief Fund. Um, was I know the consensus was the um, had the department heads um, mention what we used the money for. I'm just wondering if they need updates on that. It hasn't been spent on anything at this time. Okay, no discussion from the department heads. Of Nothing has come up as of yet that they are okay, thinking so that they need still to spend it on. Still sitting in the account. Yep. Okay. And that's it. Do you have concerns along that line, or no? I just had uh, people um, come to me and discuss it. And yeah, like that. Totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't. Uh, we haven't discussed it as a as a council. Uh, since that point, so I yeah, think, yeah, everything's been sitting there and waiting for and the way we've future future use. It's been busy um, so far, so definitely. So Adam, yeah, welcome. Uh, do you have any any thoughts, words of wisdom uh, that you'd like to, to share? Any thoughts you have about uh, for other council business? Um, <clears throat> well, first, thank you, uh, thank you for believing in me. Um, I've I've heard from quite a few residents support. Uh, as well as some that normally I hadn't had support with. Just um, I want to offer the the opportunity to have discussions, open discussions. No door is ever closed, um, even if we've disagreed about something before. Um, that's part of council business. There will be disagreements and discussions and what's best for the town, um, but I'll always respect that. And, and John, Peter, Matthew, and I know Stephanie's not here. Thank you. Um, and I do look forward to learning from you. Um, and sharing any wisdom that I can as well. Awesome. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, I guess I, I have uh, one is actually uh, I'd like to welcome Adam. Uh, and I think uh, he does bring a um, very thoughtful approach, and I've uh, learned much from him in, dis in discussions on some of the issues around town. Uh, so I, I look forward to continuing to uh, learn as much from him as he does from us. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, uh, that relationship. Uh, I think number two is actually looking forward to just want to remind folks about the election next week. 
Uh, it's one of those off-term mm. and uh, kind of, uh, you know, not the typical November election, So, it's, but this one's very important uh, for the uh, you know, school budget and then also for the primary elections. Uh, so it's still, uh, you know, your civic duty, get out there and make sure your vote is heard, and so make sure that happens. I really want to support, uh, you know, all the work um, that the, the uh, you know, Christine does and her, her staff does in providing a uh, efficient and safe election process and also the public works for helping uh, put everything together and helping unload and, and put set, not set a things up. There's so not every, everybody's, yeah. everybody's involved. Police <laughs> is involved. All and, the departments. Yes. Yeah. So I really. Team uh, Fairfield. Team, team Rock Fairfield. stars. You, you guys do a great job. I just want to give uh, some shout outs to you ahead of time, but also remind people that uh, it's coming up. And so next next Tuesday, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be there and ready, ready to vote. And okay. come say hi to Christine. I have one alibi. I forgot to mention that I did attend the um, Substance County budget. Um, meeting. That's I think it was um, the 29th. I met Stephanie up there, and um, that's the first time I went to the um, budget meeting. They approved a 15 million dollar budget in five minutes. I went to the um, go to the um, council uh, <coughs> the commit next committee. So I thought I'd just mention that. So with that, uh, the next meeting of uh, the Fairfield Town Council will be on Wednesday. June 26th, so that was a little space after the election, uh, to be held as a hybrid between <coughs> the uh, council chambers and uh, via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. At this time, we'll go into recess. Make a motion, go into recess. Second.